Hi everyone, Courtney Martin here. In this video, I'm going to go through the grooming steps um, when it comes to grooming your doodle because I did just bring Max home from the dog park and I wanted to give you guys a good view of his coat right now. He looks super fluffy and you know, it looks like he has no mats or tangles whatsoever, but actually when you run your fingers through his fluff, he does have quite a few mats in there. So I'm gonna go through and show you how I deal with them because you don't wanna leave your pup with mats, of course. Um, and that's usually a major reason or one of the, the main reasons why people do shave their pups down because there's quite a lot of maintenance when it comes to having a doodle with long fur. So I'm gonna go through all the steps and show you what I go through when I groom Max. So when I begin to groom Max, I always like to start from his head and I work my way down towards his bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. I use this pin brush here. And so I always go from top to bottom in one direction. So I always stop from, start from his head and then we work our way down. The beautiful thing about the pin brush is that you can go in all different directions and that's the goal. So I go from his head right down to his bottom like so and you can see I haven't groomed Max for about five days already and there's quite a bit of loose dead hair that is stuck in his undercoat. And as I'm running my fingers through his coat right now, I could feel there's some mats going on. So this is step one of reducing those mats. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go from Max's head right all the way down. And same thing goes, I will also get his legs and his paws as well in one direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I will touch base with you guys as soon as that's complete. All right, so I've gone through and brushed Max's coat in one direction. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what came out. So when you are told that doodles do not shed, they actually do shed. It's just that their loose dead hair gets stuck in their undercoat. So um, for me personally, I don't find that Max, you know, his fur is all over the place whatsoever, but when I brush him, I mean, this is just in one direction, what will come out. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and brush Max in the opposite direction, okay? So you can, you know, you can start from the bottom and work your way up, or, you, or again, you can start from your pup's head and work your way down in the opposite direction. So personally, I just work this way. Um, and if you're gonna start from the head, you can go ahead and just brush up in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go through, you can see, um, there's a lot of fluff that's actually coming off from Max's coat right onto the floor. So my working space right now, um, I would usually use a grooming table just cause it's easier on my back and uh, it's just better, you know, for your posture and whatnot. And so by brushing Max this way, we are getting rid of all of that loose dead fur from his undercoat. And we're actually starting to spread those natural oils around too. So it's good for your pup all around. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through Max's entire coat in this direction. Um, as you can see, he's not always loving his grooming sessions because underneath there right now, it's been five days, which is really long um, since the last time I've brushed him. Usually I'll groom him once every three days or even better yet, once a day with, with a comb, but I haven't, and I have been taking him to the dog park, so he's actually quite a mess at the moment, so this has to get taken care of right away. I'm gonna go through and brush Max's entire coat in this direction, and then I'll touch base with you guys to show you how much hair comes out on the pin brush from going in this direction. All right, so I've just gone through Max's entire coat in this direction. And so remember guys, that also includes the tail. 
okay, their legs. And I really got in behind Max's ears too, because I'm gonna show you later, even though you would never see it, right? You would think that Max, he just looks super fluffy and super soft and the pin brush is gliding through quite nicely. Actually, there's still, I could feel with my fingers, some areas where there's quite a few tangles deep in that undercoat. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you all of the hair that the pin brush has collected so far. And I did talk to quite a few groomers about this, but for whatever reason, it seems that the white, see there's a knot in there, he did not like that. <laughs> the white fluff seems to tangle much easier than the darker colors. And I didn't get into the science behind it or the reason why that happens, but it's just sort of this known thing amongst groomers that the white fur tends to tangle easier. So check this out guys. That's a lot. So had I just brushed Max in that one direction, I would never have gotten all of this extra fluff off. It's quite a bit. It's almost like wool, so you can see it kind of piles up there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through Max's coat and I'll use the same brush, the pin brush, and I'm gonna go in all different sorts of directions because even though I did go in the upward motion and the downward motion, there's still, after um, both methods, going to be some loose fluff that's gonna come out once you go in all different directions. And remember guys, this is specifically a tutorial for a doodles coat. This isn't for all dogs. So if you have a, another breed, you know, such as a golden retriever, their fur grows in in a very specific direction, right? Which most of you guys are aware of. But because this is a nice, loose, fluffy coat, we can go ahead and brush in all different directions. And so I'm not sure if you've noticed in the video, but here's an example of fluff that's just been flying off of his coat as I'm going through. So um, again, that's just a very small area, but we really wanna get rid of all of this loose, dead fur. So I'm gonna go through Max's entire coat in all of those directions, just to get all of that loose hair out. And guys, Max is laying here nicely for me because he was at the dog park for two hours. So, you know, he's not, he's not perfect, right? Um, of course, he's, I'm proud of him. He's a really good dog and everything, but he doesn't always lay this still every time I groom him. He is getting used to it, but my number one trick is bringing him for a good workout before this. So, you know, bring your pup to the dog park, let them burn off a ton of energy. So when you're doing this, they're actually nice and calm, relaxed, and well, pretty much tired. So they don't have much energy to run around or fuss with you. But that's my number one trick for this. So I'm gonna go through Max's coat all over in all different directions. And once I'm done that, I will show you guys the loose fur that I've collected. All right, so I've gone through Max's entire coat in all different directions, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you all of the extra loose fur that came out just from this, you know, another one more Passover. So check this out. Again, a ton of fur is coming out. So that's why it's really important to brush once, go for it again, and uh, go in the opposite direction. And then I like to go over um, Max's coat one more time in all different directions. And this is the reason why. I want all of this dead fur out from his coat. And so does he. I mean, if we don't, that's what causes mats. And that's what uh, a major reason for a shave down is. So we have to take care of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the slicker brush so we can get a little bit deeper into his undercoat and uh, remove even more fur. So again, guys, so far, here's all the fur that I've collected. And this really took no time at all to get out of Max's coat. So um, yeah, this is just a really good visual and reminder of why we need to keep up with their grooming. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this slicker brush and um, I'll just explain what it does and uh, 
why it's important to use as you groom your pup. So here we are with the slicker brush and what this is going to do, it's going to go ahead and grab all of that loose fluff that is stuck in Max's undercoat. So again, I always start from, you know, Max's head and I work my way down. And so that just kind of keeps a clear guide as to, you know, the areas of Max's coat that I've already brushed. So yes, I would always start from his head, I work my way down, and there's no reason to press hard when you use this um, slicker brush because, you know, it can actually scratch your pup's skin and you don't want them to feel uncomfortable as you are grooming them. We want them to, you know, think of this as a very positive experience because it's such a big part of their life, especially if you plan on keeping your doodles coat long. So this is something that you're going to be doing, you know, if not on a daily basis, on average every third day. If I, if I let Max's coat go for five days, which this is at the five mark point. Keep in mind it is winter outside right now, so he has been running around through the snow playing with other dogs and such. So this is a little bit extreme for him, but there is tons of fluff coming out of his coat right now. And I'm, as you can see, I'm working on a, a dark hardwood floor and there is just hair all over the place in my working area right now. So, um, you know, it's, it's really neat though with this breed because throughout the day, I don't see Max's hair all over the place. And when I pet him, I work from home. So, you know, I wanted to get a, a breed of dog essentially that does not shed because if I have to um, leave home and go to a meeting, I didn't want to be full of hair. And so that was a main attraction to me for this breed. So um, I did understand though with a, a longer coat dog, there is a lot of grooming involved and this is a perfect example. It takes time. So I just went through Max's entire coat with the slicker brush and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how much extra hair came out by using this. So again, this is from his undercoat. So check it out. If I did not use the slicker brush, I would not have got all of this extra loose dead hair essentially from his coat. So another reason why it's super important to use different tools for different purposes. So um, I did use this on Max's coat, top to bottom, and uh, yeah, check it out. Max's coat looks amazing. It feels really soft. I mean, he could literally walk onto a photo shoot right now, but we wanna dig a little bit deeper and go ahead and use the steel comb. And what the steel comb does is it will actually go right down to the root of Max's hair and find any sort of, you know, last minute tangles or mats that the pin brush or the slicker brush did not take care of. So the reason why I really like this is because, you know, you can really get in deep down right to the root. Again, you don't have to put a lot of pressure on and I usually start um, at Max's head and I work my way down. And so this will go ahead and confirm that, you know, if there's any mats that I did actually take care of them all because again, it's really deceiving to see a, a fluffy dog and you just assume, wow, you know, they have absolutely no mats. But as I'm going through with this comb, even after using the pin brush and the slicker brush, I could definitely feel that there's some areas where, I mean, there's a tangle right here, for example, that the other brushes didn't actually take care of. And so this again also will get rid of all of that extra loose fluff that was not picked up by the other tools that we used. And so um, I really take care to go through his coat, especially in areas like, you know, his armpits. So areas where there's essentially a lot of friction. I mean, Max, he wears a harness. And so usually in the front of Max's chest, there tends to be um, rubbing where the harness is and naturally under his, um, under his arms here, I can always feel there's usually a few tangles in there. And so I'm gonna go through everything. A really awesome trick, guys, is to use cornstarch in areas where you feel a mat. And so that is super helpful and it actually helps to reduce the pain as you're, you're brushing through your doodle's coat.
So um, <laughs> they're going to thank you for it. You're going to be happy because you don't have to cut the mat out. You could simply gently brush through it if you just put a little bit of cornstarch on the affected areas. And so just to touch base and show you guys what I've removed so far with this comb, um, here's an idea. And remember, I'm just doing a small area of Max's coat right now. So I could feel again as I'm going through, like it's feeling a little bit naughty in here and it's starting to smooth out. So I always start off with the edge of the comb that's a little bit wider. So here's an example of even more fluff that's coming out as I'm brushing through. So again, if I'm not using this tool, I would miss all of this excess fluff. So it's really important to go through and really get all of that out. So the trick is you wanna start off where the, um, the steel comb is a little bit wider. And then once you've used this side, you go through with the, where the uh, steel comb, the spaces in between are more narrow. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go through the rest of Max's coat with this tool. And I will go ahead and show you how much extra fluff comes out just by using the simple comb. All right guys, so I've gone through with the steel comb and check it out. This is not even from his entire body. This is just from a small part. Again, this is a whole bunch of loose fur. Had I not gone through and used the comb, I would have not gotten this out. So it's not a money grab when, um, you know, grooming companies, I, I really like Andis a lot. Um, when they say, you know, there's different tools for different reasons when it comes to grooming your dog, because like, I said, if I would have given up with just the pin brush, the slicker brush, and not used the steel comb, I would have not got all of this fluff out. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this that came out with the steel comb, along with all of this fluff that came out with the other tools that we're using, just to give you a visual, and I'm not even done yet. So I probably have another, I will say about 15 minutes of brushing max, and these are the steps that I take before I even think about giving Max a bath. So you wanna get rid of all of this loose dead fur before you wash your pup because as soon as your, coat, your um, pup's coat gets wet, that's when you know tangles and all that fun stuff comes out. So um, you also don't want this to be clogging up your drain. So whether you wash your dog um, inside or outside, it's always a good practice to brush your pup first. So there you go. There's a visual of you know some of the hair that's come out of his coat before I uh, bath him, and I've still got a ways to go. So here you go, guys. I will keep up with the videos, and if you have any um, suggestions or questions, let me know. I'm all ears. Oh, oh.